experience we've had. But now, if we want to move forward and build a downtown relief subway line or any other lines, we need to have a serious conversation about how to pay for it. And, uh, and I'm very proud of uh, staff and uh, proud of my colleagues that we're ready to have that conversation. Is that your next priority? You need your line should be the downtown relief? Without exception. Without exception. Um, and uh, from you know those I speak to across the, the political span, whether it be ideology or jurisdiction, <laughs> it's clear that this is something that we should and must get done and need to get done. It's first of all, it's a subway. So let's get away from the LRT subway. It's something that we need. It's where we have current population and we're projecting more density. As well, we all know any of us who take the subway, whether it be morning or afternoon rush hour, certainly on Young Street, know that uh, the infrastructure just can't take that many more people. Well, we have growth nodes throughout the city where we're trying to encourage more density. We need to increase the capacity. We need to have a downtown relief subway line. Whatever we end up calling it, we can come up with a euphemism if we want. It's the subway that's important and it's our next priority. And is there any uh, funding tool that's off the table in your mind that you don't want to go? I mean, this report gives some more specifics. For example, a parking fee that's $365 a spot, or a development charge that's $5,000 a unit, 1% sales tax. Is there anything let's that you're like, any, no? Let's not, let's not take anything off the table yet. That would be premature, and that would just be, like, that would just be politics. So, the reality is we need to put everything on the table and have a conversation with our constituents. The bottom line is, I don't think people want to pay, whether it be more fees, more tolls, more tax, if they feel like it's just going into an endless black hole of government. They keep hearing about waste and they don't want that to go towards that. If we can give them a receipt though, if we can say we are going to build you this many kilometers of transit, this is, we hear where that transit should be, this is how it will uh, positively affect your lives, are you willing to invest in it? I hear from the vast majority of Torontonians that they'd like us to do that. So you Some wouldn't of the... take any of those options off, even like our, one of them is a car tax? I think it's something that we need to review. I, again, I mean, why don't we have that conversation and then thoughtfully decide on what we remove from the table and what we keep on the table? If we simply, for, for you know, just for political optics, just take things off the table before we've had that conversation, before we weigh the merit of the arguments for or against, then we're not serving our residents well. We're not actually going to build transit if we keep doing things that way. Councillor, I mean, some of these options on the table aren't the cities to impose. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, sales taxes, income taxes. I mean, given the fiscal, you know, challenges that the province had, why... You know, is it realistic to think that they're going to let you have that, uh, that, you know, if there is room to tax, presumably Queen's Park wants to take that money to solve its own fiscal problem. I believe the province and Metrolinx wants to see Toronto take the first step. We need to demonstrate that we're serious about not only building transit, but paying for transit. Um, if we're expecting them to move forward with, admittedly, especially within the context of minority government, uh, controversial and difficult uh, decisions about what allowances they're going to give us, I think it's important that we start asking for the allowances that we need. So the first step is let's have that conversation, let's decide not what we can or can't do, but what we should do, and then we'll have that conversation with our partners. But our partners are not going to take us seriously if we're not serious ourselves. Should the, should the mayor have been in this flaggers? I think the mayor uh, should be at uh, events that are important to our communities. Certainly uh, uh, one in five of us in Toronto are going to be over the age of 65 over the next 20 years. And this is a priority that we should all be discussing and moving on. And that's why we're, we are, in fact, with our senior subcommittee and our strategy. Um, it's up to the mayor what he decides to arrive at. I would encourage him, though, to show up at things, at events that are important to the very people who he serves. Do you like this one? I'm here for that reason. Thank you. Thank you.